Good morning, everyone. It's a rainy day here, but it's very warm. Warm and rainy. That's it. <laughs> <coughs> Let's just get started. I have a little girl in there that's already awake. Yes, this is one of her daycare days, but she wants to stay with Grozy. <laughs> of course, I love it. Okay. We are in the first book of Chronicles 18. David finally subdued the Philistines and conquered Gat and its surrounding towns. He also conquered Moab and required its people to send him a large sum of money every year. He conquered the dominion of King Hadadezer of Sobah as far as Hamat. At the time, Hadadezer went to tighten his grip along the Euphrates River. David captured a thousand of his chariots, seven thousand cavalry, and twenty thousand troops. He crippled all the chariot teams except a hundred that he kept for his own use. Why would you destroy all that? I don't know. Ugh. When the Syrians arrived from Damascus to help King Had Hadadezer, David killed twenty-two thousand of them. Then he placed the garrison of his troops in Damascus, the Syrian capital. So the Syrians, too, were forced to send him large amounts of money every year. And the Lord gave David victory everywhere he went. He brought the gold shields of King Hadadezer's officers to Jerusalem, as well as a great amount of bronze from Hadadezer's cities of Tibat and Kun. King Solomon later melted the bronze and used it for the temple. He molded it into the bronze tank, the pillars, and the instruments used in offering sacrifices on the altar. Ech. Temple built of blood, kinda. Ah, gives me the creeps. When King Tau of Hamat learned that King David had destroyed Hadadezer's army, he sent his son Hadoram to greet and congratulate King David on his success and to, and to present him with many gifts of gold, silver, and bronze, seeking an alliance. For Hadadezer and Tau had been enemies, and there had been many wars between them. King David dedicated these gifts to the Lord, as he did the silver and gold he took from the nations of Edom, Moab, Ammon, Ammon, Amalek, and the Philistines. Now what's God going to do with all that? You know, there's something else too. So he, some of the stuff that was used in the temple to create whatever with, you know, the bronze basins and no, no, what, came from where? It's like secondhand stuff, right? Yes? Hmm. Okay, uh, I don't know, as far as I know, I remember uh, when, when the Ark of the Covenant was built and all that, it had to be what? It was very precise, they did everything on their own, everything was freshly done, freshly woven, okay, just saying. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, it's like this... Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, I don't know. I, it, there's so little to say to all this anymore. I think it just said it all. <laughs> this wasn't done for God's glory or power. <laughs> Obviously, David needed a lot of money, right? Did any of that go to the people? I, I don't know. I mean, can't eat gold or silver, right? At that time. Okay, all right, all right. Ugh. Abishai, son of Seruiah, 
then destroyed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He put garrisons in Edom and forced the Edomites to pay large sums of money annually to David. This is just another example of how the Lord gave David victory after victory. David reigned over all of Israel and was just ruler. Was a just ruler. Okay. Joab, son of Seruiah, was commander-in-chief of the army. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was the historian. Sadok, son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, were the head priests. Shafshah was the king's special assistant. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was in charge of the king's bodyguard. The Cherethites and Pelethites and David's sons were his chief aides. That's the end of 18. Short one. A short one. And there is that. watched a, uh, a short documentary about the Minoans. Yes, the Minoans. And uh, there, from the Minoans, let's see, there is a, a symbol of it that looks a lot like what Satanists like to use, the head of a... a Ah, Minotaur, what are they called? Minotaur, Minotaur, <laughs> anyway, and, uh, and it looks like the head of a goat, okay, that's what it looks like, but it's in, uh, it's kind of in the maze style, you know, with the, yeah, like this, you know, it's a whole thing, it's kind of, you know, with the whatever, horns, and uh, oh, did they invent the mazes, you know, like we can see, you know, where the kids are like a round maze, but where, where you find your way through it, you know. The Minoans, Crete Islands, and supposedly they were the first Western in that area civilization, and I started to listen right, on what what made them a civilization? Uh, okay, one part was human sacrifices. <laughs> yeah, very civilized. But you know what? That's kind of... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought, oh yeah, civilizations all around the world when it comes to, okay, civilizations are built up of what? What did we just read here? Blood sacrifices of others. No? Okay. Uh, that's civilized. That's considered civilized. I find that a bit ironic. But all right. Another thing that uh, was interesting to see. Okay, bronze was a big thing. I read, when I started reading about bronze, I went, oh yeah, I need to talk about that. Bronze was a big thing, but they didn't have any bronze on their island, or islands. And so, even though they were quite secluded, they weren't just on the islands. They actually had boats and went out and went to different places of Greece and yeah, got bronze and made all kinds of things out of them. And kind of distinct, that's why they know, oh, this is a Minoan thing. Uh, interestingly enough, that uh, one tomb they found of some dude, uh, and they found a bunch of uh, pictures on the wall, this and that. One thing that struck me was they, the, the Cushites. Uh, the Cushites are in the Bible here too, aren't they? 
The Kushites were mentioned. Oh, okay. So bronze was a big thing, but they had to get that. They had to import that. Then there was another thing that supposedly they, the Minoans were the first ones they ever, that ever did that or discovered that or whatever, was the color purple. The color purple actually exists mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, oh, what they call, not mollusks. They were called... It kind of looked a little like mollusks, but they're not mollusks. It's some other animal, but it has the little shell, and then it looks like a snail on the inside, kind of <laughs> slobbery. And they're in the ocean, and they could extract, I don't know, I guess the blood or whatever was purple of them or something, whatever it was. And uh, they were the first ones, supposedly, who made purple robes, this snack, clothes. And, of course, it was for what? That's right. It was meant for uh, royals, imperial stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. That's how purple became. Yeah, okay. Well, that was one of the colors that God wanted to wear. Okay. Or instructed. Oh, okay. Uh... Interesting. So it wasn't really, uh, and the Minoans lived <laughs> way before, uh, 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 as far as I could tell, or what they said, before the Ark of the Covenant was actually fashioned. So where did the idea that purple, right, scarlet, purple, right, had to be on the Ark of the Covenant? Why was it an imperial, uh, royal kind of color? Did it come from God, or was it already established us that color? Oh, because the Minoans, okay. So that was one of their trading things, right? Uh, there's more, but uh, I find it interesting on how the whole presentation was given with very little again on how the Minoans, the common people, actually lived. Okay. It was just <laughs> kind of what we're reading here, just about. Yeah. Yes, the higher ups. Uh, anyway, was a bit boring. <laughs> A little disappointing. It seems like that to conquer power, uh, the things just that people do to advance is so crude in a way. Crude, cruel, with very little thought for any people as a whole. Right? Yes, that's kind of what I got and seem to be getting. <laughs> Anywho. Mm. Just in this little passage again, when was God thrown in there? To make it okay. To do what? kill a bunch of people yes and uh, the temple was mentioned a couple of times right yes the amount of loot and all that that no doubt was uh, collected during all these wars and all as I said it's like it, it had to be made okay somehow somehow everybody knew it wasn't okay but if you threw God in there every once in a while and, of course, oh, yeah, yeah, let's give uh, these bronze shields. You know, what are we going to do with them? Yeah, yeah, that's not going to be... They're already kind of smeared. I mean, yeah, you know, probably, yeah, I don't know how pure bronze that is. Now, let's just melt it down and put it in the temple. You know, that'll be a good offering. You know, at least it won't be wasted. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Interesting. Anywho. 
So there is that. I don't really have a whole lot more to say. I got some things to do in the house. And uh, well, I was going to go and take a walk with the little one today, but it looks like it's going to rain all day. It's, it's this drizzle rain, steady rain. Yes, good, it's a good thing. Springtime's coming. Soon. Not quite here yet. It's going to get cold again at the end of this week, so we'll find out. How cold? Snow? It has snowed in April here. You never know. You just never know. Well, anyway, that's all. That's all I have to share this morning. Um, gosh, I tell you what. I'm not sure if a depressed person should read the Bible. <laughs> At least not the Old Testament. At least not the parts we've been reading. I feel like... You almost have to take it now a little bit on the humorous side. You know what I mean? You laugh a lot, right? <laughs> well, what else am I going to do? Cry? Cry about it? Yeah, one should cry about it. But we're not just here to discuss the Bible and, man, what did they do? And who did they pull into? God wasn't a part of any of that. They did that on their own and for, for their own purpose, their own agenda, their own riches, their own whatever, okay? Solutions. I said this many times. Solutions is what we should be looking for as well. And I think I give some. Don't always know how does one stop? What's going on everywhere? How does one? Well, here's the thing. you got to trust God. If your heart to mind is on the right track, your conscience is clear, right? uh, then whatever you're doing, whatever you're willing to give out there under the guidance of God is going to have a good outcome, even if things look bad. Uh, I've said this before, right? blessings in disguise. Some things are happening in our country. I look at them going, hmm, yeah, that's not really good. Right? But how can change truly happen? I think people have to just be become completely foolish first and so foolish that things will in a way become apparent on now you're defenseless you're becoming completely defenseless now what are you going to do hmm? or it's just all hyped up again <laughs> I guess it's what do you believe out there anymore, right? Yes? Uh, I think many wars now, right? Well, there's still physical wars going on out there. It baffles me that this is still happening. Well, and all this other stuff I've mentioned before. But one thing is we have other wars going on now. And that is the war of gossip, rumors, right? false information, suppressing the truth. Right? That's a different kind of war, isn't it? Yes. An odd one, too. Right? Well, that's why I always caution. Before you get on a hay wagon with someone that's already on fire, in a way, <laughs> You just don't notice it yet. Make sure that you get more information. And when the information that you're collecting isn't consistent, something most likely is wrong with it. Right? Yes? Anyway, that's all I have to say. Uh... Today, oh, I'm a little tired. Ah, oh, 
not sleeping in my own bed sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Though this is a comfortable bed, too. <laughs> uh, it kind of wears on you a little bit, right? Yes, yes, it's wearing a little on me this time. Uh, not too bad. Uh, I can take a nap in the afternoon if I need to. <laughs> All right. Done, done. Okay. That's really, that's all I have to say. I wish I had more to say. I could say more, but about many different things. I think the main thing is from having seen some other things again, I really wish there was a way where we comfortably really could lay down all of our weapons and make them into plowshares. I think that making sure that everyone is fed properly in our world should be way more important than territory to conquer, don't you think? Yeah. So anyway. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you, and I will talk to you another time.